Scene one, Apple take two. Last checks, please. Rolling, please. Rolling. That's me. Ready and action. This is our first day shooting in Iceland. It's uh, been an adventurous one. We did some aerial work yesterday, which was exciting, but today we embarked on uh, the first of what we hope is a couple weeks of very good filming here. I couldn't wait to go to Iceland. I've never been there, first of all. Just absolutely stunning. It's just so fast, and it just seems to go on forever. And Joe's eye and how he shot it is just extraordinary. Yeah, that's nice. Action. The landscape looks like really no other place on Earth. It's a volcanic island, black sands, no trees. There's a beauty in the desolation there, and that seemed to kind of fit the aesthetic I wanted for oblivion. We were there when it was daylight for 24 hours. Right now, it's 9 o'clock at night, which I know the picture doesn't suggest it is, but it is 9 o'clock at night. You get what we call magic hour, which is where the sun's low in the sky. You get this beautiful light, and it lasts seven or eight hours. And from a filmmaker's point of view, it's an amazing opportunity to just get this beautiful light for hours on end. Nailed it. <laughs> There's just so many wonderful geothermal spots everywhere. You're just driving down the road, and you come across a geyser or a natural crater. We're in the very north of Iceland in an amazing crater. And uh, the crater's going to stand in ultimately for what will be a uh, stadium. I'm coming in hot. Our character Jack arrives here to fix a broken drone that's been downed in some battle. Tech 49, Jack Harper. You know, I read about this game. It was played right here. Visual effects will put in the remainders of broken billboards and stadium seating. And he leaps out of the pack. Touchdown! You'll get the sense that we're inside something that used to be pretty amazing. It's very unique. I haven't seen anything like this before. We shot on Earl's Peak, which is a mountain peak in the middle of Iceland, really in the middle of nowhere. Glaciers on one side, black sand desert on the other. It was one of those experiences that you dream about as a director, about going to places that most people have never seen and getting to capture it all in camera. Today is day 71 here in lovely Iceland. We are sort of out of the beaten track. We had to bring all our gear up here. Today we had seven buckets loaded up by our professional mountaineers, and then those were flung beneath an A-Star helicopter, and then we drop it here depending on where we need it. Basically all the people have to be flown in. We got helipads down here. We bring everybody up in the Coast Guard helicopter. The Icelandic Coast Guard has helped us out a lot today, so we're happy for that. That took a lot of planning. We had 50 people up there with hair and makeup, wardrobe, props, camera grips, two techno cranes. Safety-wise, it's a tricky place to shoot. You gotta go safety gear. People need to have helmets on because it's easy to slip here and also quite steep. So we had to put up handrails, anchors, safety lines. If you need to go outside of the rope area for work purposes, you have to be harnessed. No one has shot here before and we have actually never brought crew of this size and all that equipment up on a location like that. So far, so good. The trick will be getting the shot Joe wants and then getting home. Oh, here we go. This is awesome. Earl's Peak, beautiful. I loved Earl's Peak. <laughs> That's what I need to uh, What do we need to do? It's incredible. Because we were so well prepared, as soon as he landed, we were able to shoot very quickly. Can I walk? Yes, sir. You're, yep. good. You're good to go. We are rolling, please. Rolling. Let's the only kill sticks. We're uh, shooting Tom on the top of a 2,000 foot precipice. And action. It's just incredible. I mean, you've got Tom Cruise on the very edge of that peak with the most beautiful light. It was just one of those days I'll never forget. It was amazing, you know, just to sit there and you get to see so much of the country. We're gonna do a little rappelling at lunch, guys. <laughs> you will not find too many actors out there who will go the distance like he does. He's the most committed actor I've ever worked with. And cut. Good. Okay. Okay. It was to his chagrin that we ended so quickly, and he decided that he'd like to stay a little longer on his own. So we got all the equipment off, he stayed up there and enjoyed the view for a while. It was really peaceful, it was so beautiful. I think, you know, when you see the film, it captured it. It captured that haunting beauty and kind of 
serenity. Rose reading room of the New York Public Library for that sequence at the beginning of the movie. I'm set. So we get to see Tom rappel into that space. He gets involved with a little bit of trouble down there, so we have some really cool stunts. The library turns out to be a trap. It's a big action sequence that plays out in there. Three, two, one, four! Ah. Oh. Ah. This production, as far as the action is concerned, has been loaded up front. Here we go, action! That was easier making it than not making it. He's able to perform the stunts usually better than 99% of all stunt people. And I'm done. Nailed it. Sweet. Fun. We test everything out. Hey, Tom, this is OK, but you don't want to put your foot down. You don't want it to catch on anything. When I do have a loaded weapon, I don't want people standing yeah. around the sides. As we have to keep him safe, he also knows that he has to keep himself safe. Can you turn it against his right body like that? And this is tight, right? There you go, that's it, perfect. Lars doesn't hit me in the face. <laughs> We're dropping the brie. We use balsa wood. It's real light, breaks easy. Let's stand by for picture. Weapons hot. Here we go, on a bow, fire the hole. Three, two, one, action. Hot run, cut. It's been stunned after stunned, which is normal 